and um, I had one school district that was um, in the state of Florida, you have to maintain a certain balance, otherwise a fund balance. Otherwise, this, for so many, if you miss that balance for so many years, then the state takes your district over and leases you out to some company that is going to make sure your finances are done properly. Well, this is what happened. And this one school got their, this one district got their uh, facility back like in February. Well, it was after, it was after March when they figured out that this company that was um, uh, taking care of their finances did not file for the E-rate. So they contacted me. We did a form 470. We filed out a window. So what happens if, if you file out a window, you have to ask for a waiver. Um, and whenever I went to um, USAC for an actual definition of this, and it says if you miss your filing, your form 471 within the window, you can certify it out of the window. You have to go ahead and cert prepare your 471 and certify it out of window. If you completely missed a deadline and are longer than two weeks, you can file a waiver with the FCC in the, in the electronic commitment filing system in CC docket number 02-6 within 60 days from the date that you filed the last application, which would be your form 471. In the request, you had to include the entity name, an email for the contact person, application number, and description of any special circumstances in the waiver re request. When you certify the application out of window, you receive a pop-up that gives you the directions with a URL to file the waiver on. So what we did was I filed this waiver in it. We said, this is what happened. Uh, the people that were the entity that was taking care of our district did not file for E-rate. We're a small district. It is uh, very important that we get this money. Uh, financially, we can't afford it, but our students have to have it. And then I got a, and then the superintendent wrote a letter on their district head, and we attached all that to the review, and we got it. And we actually got awarded, and we didn't. Um, by the time we got went through the 470 and the 471, and did the waiver, and did all that. We were actually on out into July before we were uh, received the award, the funding commitment decision letter, but we won it. So it was it was a long process, but it was worth it in the end for the district. But let's say that you um let, let's just say that your the form four seventy one filing window closed on March the twenty first. And you didn't file your form 471 until March th to the day after. Well, you know, it's going to tell you filed out a window. And then, but then as long as you're within a two week period, they will let it go through. But what they do is they will review all of the applications and your application will be last. That's why it's so important to set your deadline to start in July. And decide what you want, get with your vendor, whatever project you want to do, find out what you're going to need. And then you have, then if your procurement department requires you go through them in order to get a docket number, then by November, you have all this completed and you're ready to file your Form 470 with the RFP. So then you do that, that's out there for the 28 days. So when you get back from Christmas break, you have your, when you get back from Christmas break, you have your, you're ready to review your application, your um, responses that you got from your vendors. So then when you come back, you can, when you come back, if you don't have time before you go to Christmas to award it, when you come back from Christmas break, you are ready to award your award to your vendor and then 
whenever the window opens, usually the middle of February. When you when that window opens, you file for your Form 471. And what they do is it's first in, first out. So if you if you're one of the first ones to put in your Form 471, then you're going to know. I mean, they're going to start, and if they review it, then they will go ahead and complete that review. And then in May, you will be one of the first ones in Wave 1. You will get your funding decision commitment letter. But if you wait till, let's say, the window closes on March the 31st, let's say you don't file till March the 31st, then you've got these other however many hundred thousand applications that they're going to go through before they do yours. So it's very important, I can't stress it enough, to set your deadlines, to put your RFP, your Form 470, put it out the 1st of November. That gives you plenty of time before you are, need to file your Form 471 the middle of February. But that's just very important to me, and I stress that to all of my um, all my districts. And in one of the things in my contract is it says you will abide by the consultants. So that way I try to keep them on track with that. 